I was easily able to drop this thing. I gave it a 2-4 drop in my driveway and I did it within a day. Well, hello everyone, Kevin here, and thanks for watching this video in our Bottom Line series, where we focus on everything about custom lower trucks. And on that note, uh, for this video, I wanted to talk about the easiest ways to get into uh, a lower truck. Because uh, there's uh, several different makes and models, I think that are a little bit easier uh, than some others, as well as some of the parts, because there's a, a plethora of parts that are out there. And it might be a little confusing if you're new to everything and you know don't know what you're looking at and don't know what's the best route to go. It could also be a little bit intimidating if you're new uh, to ask questions to people. So I wanna make that a little bit easier for you guys. Well, I've been into custom trucks for over two decades now, but I don't know every single make and model and uh, the specifics of each one of those. So to do some research on this video, uh, I talked to my buddy Seth over at Switch Suspension as he's got tons of experience uh, with different vehicles and uh, all the suspension systems and how they work and whatnot. So I have to give a shout out to him uh, for helping me out on this one and let you guys know if you need ever need any uh, suspension products uh, lifted or lowered, he's the guy to talk to. All right, well digging into all of this, I wanna start off by saying that I'm gonna focus mostly on uh, half ton pickup trucks as uh, you know, if you're looking at a cheap, easy way to get into trucks, uh, those are the most plentiful, they'll be uh, cheaper prices and everything. So uh, that's gonna be where my focus is when you get start getting into the heavy duty trucks. Uh, the trucks actually cost a little bit more. Uh, maybe if you already have one, uh, it might be pretty easy. Uh, but if you're looking to get into everything um, and you don't, you know, you're starting from scratch, you don't have a truck yourself, I would look into the half ton pickups. And uh, domestic to be specific, uh, just cause they're more common and there's more parts and everything. Uh, with that being said, I wanna talk about C10 trucks. So. Uh, C10s go as back as uh, 1960, but uh, those were a little bit more difficult. So I would say uh, 1963 through 1987 uh, C10 trucks are pretty easy to uh, lower because basically all you need is a set of coil springs front and back on most models. Uh, some trucks are different, you know, maybe you have leaf springs. Uh, the heavier duty trucks uh, might have like torsion bars. So that's a little bit uh, more difficult. But for the most part, C10 trucks are very easy to lower. Uh, I will tell you this, that um, it doesn't really cut it on my list because getting into one of those trucks, you're probably gonna spend at least 10 grand to get into a truck. Uh, you're probably gonna have some other issues. And if you're looking at reliability, uh, unless you rebuild a truck from scratch, you're gonna have some issues. So I highly wouldn't recommend looking into C10s as your first truck to be a reliable daily driver, uh, unless you're gonna spend a lot more than you would, because uh, they're great trucks. So I'm, I'm not gonna knock them, they're great trucks, but yeah. That's what I'm looking at here. However, some of the heavier duty trucks, you can actually lower them for cheap, if not free a little bit. Uh, like my 62 GMC, which is actually a three quarter ton truck, which means that the front end had uh, what we call torsion bars on it. So basically I unwound the uh, bolts on the torsion keys a little bit, and I got about three inches of drop on my truck. So that made, you know, that helped out a little bit. Uh, I added a set of drop spindles as well. Uh, so that got a couple more inches. And then in the rear, I did coil springs. So honestly, my truck was quite a bit easy. But like I said, I don't recommend these trucks necessarily. There was a whole host of other things that had to go on. Like I did a whole motor swap, uh, actually drivetrain swap uh, too with the transmission as well, even the rear end, because uh, there were so many things wrong with the truck uh, as far as drivability that I wanted to change that all. So that was you know a pretty penny to make it all happen. But um, you know, I don't want to discourage you guys. If you want to do it, get out there. It's not going to be the uh, easiest way to do it, but uh, it can be done. While we're on the subject of C10s, I could tell you that parts are plentiful for them. Because they're popular, a lot of companies have jumped on the bandwagon and have created uh, a lot of quality parts for them uh, for you know pretty reasonable prices. So you can drop them uh, pretty easy and pretty cheap uh, if you want to go just a few inches. But you also have the option to go a little bit further if you want to do air ride or anything like that because a number of companies have bolt-on kits. Uh, companies like uh, Chop and Block, GSI, Porterbilt, and a few others have kits that you can install in the ease of your uh, garage or driveway or what have you. Uh, with a little know-how, you can get some great results out of these things, but do be, be prepared to spend a little bit more on those. Uh, I would shy away from uh, mid-century trucks 
as the suspension systems on those trucks are a little bit more difficult. They're outdated. They're, uh, they just don't work as well. You know, things like not having power steering, something like that, uh, just makes them harder to drive. Also, the trucks are more likely to be in bad condition, to be damaged or have a lot of rust. And it's just gonna take a lot more money to get one of those trucks to a good space where you can enjoy it. Uh, and don't get me wrong, those trucks look great. I absolutely love them. But if you're looking to get in something quick and easy, those just aren't the ones for you. Moving on, let's talk about Dodge trucks, as I think they get a bad rap. A lot of people think that they're hard to lower, when in fact, uh, some of the trucks from the 90s and early 2000s are just as easy to work on as Chevy's. Uh, I think the problem comes that uh, there's not as many parts for them. Uh, they're a little bit more scarce because not as many people uh, make the parts because the trucks aren't as popular, but that's all right. You can find them, they are out there. And if you wanna talk about one of the easiest Dodge trucks to get into, I would say it would be the Ram from anywhere from 2009 to present, uh, as they have coil springs on all four corners. So doing the rear is super easy. The front is a little bit more complicated uh, because they changed to a uh, strut system. So you have to take that whole unit out, use a coil compressor to get the spring off and then put, it, uh, put the new one back in. So if you wanna save yourself on that end, you can get what's called a drop spindle. And McGoy's has these for those trucks. So basically you can put a jack under your uh, front control arms, unbolt the spindles, replace the new ones in, and you have a drop right there. So honestly, they can be pretty easy to do, uh, I would say, uh, as well as you know the cost. But do keep in mind that when you get into the later model trucks, they start costing more because they're still kind of new. But if you go towards something that's a little bit older, like a 2009 or 2010 model, uh, prices drop because they got some mileage on them, so it could be easier to get into. I think some of the negativity that Dodge trucks get are from guys that want to airbag these trucks as there's not many kits or any parts for them. A lot of times you got to do some fabrication. But I'm going to go back to the 09 model. Uh, there actually is a kit from Ride Tech, which they call the Shockwave uh, Cool Ride Kit, which uh, will get you air ride. Uh, it's definitely not going to get you all the way on the ground with this simple bolt-on kit, but uh, it will get you lower than a static drop. You know, you can let the air out of the system and get a little bit lower when you're parked. So uh, yeah, do keep in mind that option is out there. In my honest opinion, I think the easiest way to get in a lower truck would be with a Chevy NBS. And that would be those uh, full-size Chevy trucks produced from 1999 to 2006. Uh, part of my reasoning is those trucks are just so popular. There's so many out there. You can find them for under 10 grand. And if they have a V8, it's an LS engine. So they have power, they have reliability. There's a lot of parts available for them. So it's just, in my opinion, the easiest way to go, the easiest way to get into one, the cheapest one to get into. So yeah, I think there's a lot of benefits with going with an MBS truck. One of the things that makes these trucks so great to lower is that uh, they had a different spindle system than their predecessors, where basically they didn't have a spindle on them anymore. Uh, so you didn't have to uh, yeah, tighten down bearings, grease them up, uh, get your castle nut right or anything like that. Uh, you didn't have to worry about them because they had a removable hub. And this was very revolutionary at the time. And one of the companies that was the first at making a drop spindle for these trucks was McGoey's, uh, which I think is pretty much the best way to go uh, if you're looking at ease of insulation, uh, ride quality as well, because with a spindle, if you don't go any lower than that, let's say you want a two inch drop, or I think it might be a two and a half inch drop, don't quote me exactly on that. But um, if you wanna go a little bit moderate on the front, you can keep the stock uh, springs so you get that factory ride with a little bit of a drop. Now, do keep in mind that uh, spindles are a little bit more costly, you know, a few hundred bucks more than going with springs. Uh, so yeah, you're gonna have, um, you know, more cost, but you're gonna have a little bit better ride. But you can also combine them with springs as well and get, uh, go even lower with them. One of the things that makes these trucks so easy to work on is the alignment adjustments on the front end. You can easily set the camber and uh, toe angles. You can eyeball them enough so that you can get to an alignment shop and prevent any excess or uneven tire wear. That's very important. I could tell you I had a, a 07 Classic Silverado, which is the same body style, just carried over into 07. And uh, I was easily able to drop this thing. I gave it a 2-4 drop in my driveway and I did it within a day. Uh, it wasn't that difficult at all. Uh, I think the only issue I had is because my truck was a crew cab. So I had to drop the gas tank in order to change the leaf springs in the back. But really it wasn't that bad and I was easily able to get the results that I wanted. If you end up getting into one of these trucks uh, and you drop it a few inches and find out that it's just not enough for you, there are other options out there. Uh, you can even get a coilover system from Ride Tech, uh, so you can go quite a bit uh, further down with them and also get a performance-minded suspension system 
that you can tune, that can ride a little bit better too as well while it's dropped. And if you want to go even further, you can actually lay the frame on these trucks with uh, KP Components uh, front and rear kits. Now do keep in mind that uh, you will have to cut the frame in the back, you will have to cut your bed floor out, but you can get these results. And parts options like this uh, is just a number of reasons why these trucks are just so great and so easy to get into. When it comes to Chevy trucks that are newer than NBS, I can tell you they're not that much more complicated. Though in 2007, they switched over to a uh, front uh, strut system, just like the Rams. So they are a little bit more complicated. You do have to contend with that uh, when you're lowering them. Uh, though for the sake of this list, uh, those trucks, because they're a little bit newer, uh, they're gonna be more expensive, so they're not as easy to get into. Uh, and that's why I think MBS is in that sweet spot. Now, a lot of you out there are probably wondering about OBS Chevy trucks, as they are plentiful, and there are a lot of them that are dropped. But I can tell you from experience, they're a little bit harder than uh, MBS trucks. Those OBS Chevys uh, have the spindle up front, so you do have to worry about the bearings and packing those in when you put the brakes and the hub on. So uh, it's a little bit more complicated when working with that. Also, the alignments are more difficult. I remember when we did my dad's 93 GMC, we went to the alignment shop and they told us that the uh, negative camber was about uh, one and a half degrees and the spec was one degree. And in order to change it, they were gonna have to uh, chisel out some parts, put some shims in, re-weld everything back together. And it just seemed like a lot of work uh, to get a half a degree. When negative camber is actually good for drivability and cornering, though it will give you some uh, uneven tire wear. But we kind of figured if we rotate the tires enough or pretty often, uh, we won't really see that and we never really did. But do keep in mind with these trucks, uh, that front end alignment, so if you do a dramatic drop like that, uh, they are harder to work on um, when we're talking about that front end. So yeah, MBS is, is a better choice overall. Well, if you're dead set on getting an OBS Chevy, all the power to you. Just keep in mind, uh, they're a little more pricier. The trucks are like 10 grand and above right now. So uh, yeah, they cost a little bit more. There are plenty of parts for them. I can tell you that it's easy to lower them. The parts are actually to lower them are actually cheap. Uh, you know, if you're doing a simple drop on them, so it's not that bad. Uh, just like I said, a little bit more complicated. And there are options as well. So um, just like the MBS, if you want to go with a coilover system, QA1 has a really good system that's got a lot of adjustment out of it. You get some great results out of that. And if you want to go all the way down, just like MBS, uh, there's also air ride kits from KP Components as well. If by any chance you're confused on what an OBS truck is or want to know more about them, we did a video previous to this one uh, where we talk about Fords versus Chevys, all the different uh, versions of them, as well as, uh, you know, some of the nuances about them, as well as uh, the marketplace for them. So if you want to learn more about them, uh, check out the uh, link in the description below. With that being said, let's dive into Ford trucks as they really are the tough ones to uh, lower. Now, going back from 65 to 79, these trucks had a uh, twin I-beam front uh, suspension system, and that goes into uh, F-150s all the way up to 1996. And they're really hard to work on. If you go cheap and swap out springs on them and you go to get an alignment, basically what they do is they heat up the I-beams uh, so they can manipulate them so you can get the alignment right, which just is, it just doesn't sound right to me to do. Uh, if you do spend a little more money, DGM does have what they call their dream beams, uh, which you can use that have that corrected in them. Uh, so it's easier to get an alignment, but there's just a lot of things going on. Uh, these trucks were designed to go more off-road, uh, to handle rough road. And uh, yeah, that's where that suspension system was designed for. So they don't take well to lowering. And it's just another reason why a lot of people don't look towards those trucks to lower them because of those obstacles. So after shooting this video, I remembered a few solutions for F100s that were a bit economical. For uh, 53 to 56 F100s, it was common practice to use a uh, 1976 to 1980 Plymouth Volari front end. So basically you'd find that car in a junkyard, take the front end, swap it on your truck, and you have some uh, better drivability to it. Uh, the problem I see here is that car is a bit of an oddball these days. So uh, finding one in the junkyard could be pretty tough. If you do, it's probably pretty cheap to do it, but overall, I don't think it's a good solution. For 67 to 72 F100s, it's very common to use a 2003 to 2009 Ford Crown Victoria front end. And basically you unbolt that, you bolt it right up to your F100 and you've some power steering, you got disc brakes. I think you have a strut system on there as well. So very modern stuff. Uh, a couple problems here is that it's straightforward. There's a little finessing you have to do. 
And um, yeah, it's not like buying a kit where you get an instruction set uh, or anything like that. The other problem is that I hear is the track width is a little wide for these trucks. So uh, your wheel options isn't really there. So yeah, not really uh, the greatest of solutions. Well, if you're dead set on getting an F100 and price isn't as much of an issue, uh, I would look into uh, QA1 as they got a complete coilover uh, suspension system that will get you where you want to be. You can get low, uh, you can have good ride quality and have some performance. So yeah, definitely check them out if that's the direction you're going to go. Now I will tell you that the 97 to 2003 uh, rounded out F-150s are relatively easy to do. They're not as bad, but if you look at it, the span is a little bit shorter. Also, those trucks are a little bit dated. Uh, they're harder to come by, so if you have any problems with re replacement parts or anything like that, it's going to be tougher. So I don't recommend those trucks for the sake of uh, simplicity or, you know, reliability. Uh, even though if you have a good one, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm not going to knock on them, but uh, it's just not going to be as easy as the MBS Chevy, I think, is the winner overall. As far as other models of F-150s uh, that you can lower, I can tell you that the 04 and present trucks are a bit easier to work on. Uh, they do have a strut system on them, and I found that uh, DJM does have a kit for the 04 to 17 trucks uh, where they have uh, control arms that you can easily replace and you don't have to swap out the springs. Or if you do go a little bit further, you can replace the springs if you want, depending on how low you want to go. But yeah, DJM has it uh, pretty much solved. Like I said, I think uh, MBS Chevy trucks are the easiest way to get into the lower truck scene. Uh, they're cheaper, there's more of them, there's a lot of parts available for them and they're pretty reliable. So I just think they're the best option out there right now. Uh, if you guys don't like that truck and you're wanting to do something else that's cheap and easy, please do your research. Uh, so you make sure you don't uh, waste any time or money on getting into things if, if that's the direction you're going. And uh, yeah, if there's any other options that I missed, I want to know about it. So drop that stuff in the comment section below. And well, that's about it for this video and it's time to wrap things up. And I hope you liked it. So if you did, hit that like button because it helps us make more videos in the future. Uh, make sure you don't miss a future video by uh, subscribing to this channel and we will catch you next time. Thanks for watching Driving Line. If you guys like this video, consider subscribing to our channel so you'll never miss any of the content we create here. Whether you're into trucks, Jeeps, imports, domestic vehicles, or anything in between, we are here to fuel your passion. So hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys next time.